Rodney Sharman writes amazing music for cabaret, opera, and dance. He works with choreographers, conductors, and movie makers. He plays the flute, and he wins awards here in Europe and beyond. He is a former president of the Canadian League of Composers. It is my pleasure to welcome Rodney Sharman to Studio 4 to tell us more. Pleasure to be here, Fanny. So you heard music, and you said... That's fine. <laughs> I know, right away. Uh, and I didn't know for sure it was yours, but you knew. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did you learn to compose? I was about 10 years old, and uh, I grew up in a small town, Bigger Saskatchewan, where there wasn't a lot of classical music, as you can imagine. I, but can, I, I remember Bigger Saskatchewan. You know it. I'm a Montana girl, but I remember people from Bigger Saskatchewan. I'll tell you later. So I was a choir boy and could read, well, I could read music before I could read words and numbers. So uh, my, well, my mother had to put the little, little uh, uh, markers in the hymn book because I couldn't understand the numbers for, you know, which hymns we were right. going to be singing and so on, but I could read the notes. You uh, could, we, and we did you know a treble clef so from a bass clef and Absolutely. all of that, so you were right there. Absolutely. But I started writing music on my own when I was about 10, and uh, because there was no staff paper or anything available in a small town like that, I would draw my own manuscript paper, and right. I would take the piano apart, take everything out and sort of strum on the, on the strings inside. My mother had, a, had an electric organ, and so I would put books on top of the keys to make these sort of these clusters, and then I would improvise over the top, and record them with a little Bell and Howell uh, cassette tape recorder from you know the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So, can I <laughs> so, say pretty much you were self-taught? Oh, from the from the beginning, yes. But then we moved to Victoria when I was 15, and I had one of the greatest teachers you could imagine. I had Maria Daskin as mm. a teacher when I was a boy. And he was the brother of Harry Adaskin, who founded the UBC Music School, mm -hmm. and John Adaskin, who was the first big CBC producer for music. So it's a very, very distinguished family. He was a beautiful violinist, nice man, you know, great composer. Mm -hmm. And I got to work with him when I, between the ages of 15 and 18. So he, he really shaped me as an artist and as a human being, too, mm -hmm. because he really gave a lot back to the world. Well, teachers, especially music teachers, are so important, are Absolutely. they not? When you think, I may just give this instrument up, they say, no, you won't. You're For a great flute player. <laughs> Fortunately, I never had anybody telling me I should give up. You didn't? <laughs> no. It, did you have uh, uh, a need or a desire, though, to play other instruments? Yes, you're good at the flute, but the, did you toy with becoming a trumpet player or... Uh, did you like the bassoon or the cello or the viola? I started as a piano, like playing the piano, but uh, mm -hmm. I have an injury with my hand from the time I was four, so I have a very clumsy right thumb. Mm. Uh, I begged my parents, absolutely begged them for a violin, and I'll never forget my 10th birthday. They gave me a plastic violin with nylon strings, and years, years later, we were talking about it, and I said that. You know, I, re I reminded them of this and how much I had wanted to learn the violin. And they had always said, we will not have a beginner violin in the house. We don't <laughs> want that. And it was a big house. Yes. <laughs> but uh, uh, I said, know the they sound. Said, they said that they would have made the same decision. Even knowing that I became a professional musician, they would have forbidden it. Mm -hmm. so, so I started with clarinet. That's fair. It's got that E string. Mm -hmm. You know, that's high. Mm -hmm. And if you don't play it well, I, I played the violin, so I have some knowledge. Some knowledge. And I know uh, you start with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star because Indeed. it's open strings. And then uh, your dog starts to howl as, as you're practicing. And the mm -hmm. dog is howling. In think, tune? I'm not so good yet. Okay. Obviously, I'm hurting the dog's ears. Mm -hmm. So any string instrument, really, you have to make the note, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So back to you. I started uh, with clarinet, then uh, flute later, because there was nobody in the town who played the flute. Little did I know that it's one of the most popular instruments, but it was the, I was the only flute player in town. So, so practical you were. Exactly. And you went to UVic, right? Graduated from UVic, did all of that. Mm -hmm. When was the first time you thought, I have arrived? I'm a real composer. You know, yes, you've been composing since you were 10 and playing music and infused by it, but was there an event, a particular piece? Absolutely. It was when my piano concerto was performed by Walter Prosnitz and the Victoria Symphony with Paul Freeman conducting. It was in the late 1970s. It, it might have been 1979 or maybe mm -hmm. the beginning. It was 1979, mm -hmm. 1980, that concert season. 
and it was uh, my first professional performance with an orchestra. And Walter played the, uh, the concerto from memory. It was incredibly impressive, and it was the first time, uh, it was the first time that my parents, too, I think really knew that, that, uh, that I had done the right, right thing. And they encouraged you. They didn't say, why don't you uh, become a doctor or a de get a real job? Oh, no, my parents absolutely said that mm. I should get a real job. My mother wanted me to be an architect. And it was very funny when the, you know, when the bottom fell out of architecture, remember, about mm -hmm. 15 I years sure ago? Do. And nobody mm -hmm. in architecture was making any money, and I was making more money than they did. <laughs> I phoned her and reminded her that she had yes. wanted me to do that. And you were traveling <laughs> the world, too. I was, yes. And not that some architects don't. Well, you have to be kind of a really famous architect to do that, but mm -hmm. as a composer, you can compose in Prague, or you can compose in uh, bigger Saskatchewan. True. Mm. Where do you compose? Uh, this is my normal composing time. I normally write at home, and I write mostly in the morning, because uh, I find that if, that if I make a kind of sacred time in the day that mm -hmm. uh, you know, I keep the phone off, I do not turn on the computer until later, uh, I do not, you know, I sort of maintain this kind of silent space for myself. Uh, if I'm lucky, I've got these long kind of dreamy days where I can write music for the whole day and choose my breaks and all of that. Weeks like this, when I've got a concert and rehearsals, I try to keep my mornings free so that I write every day. Mm -hmm. And when you compose with somebody, and not with, but if you do work for yes. uh, a famous choreographer or a, a Kadelka, uh, uh, Adam Agoyan, mm -hmm. movie maker, Tell me about that project. I have wanted to write film music with Atom, and um, I had taught his sister, who performed mm -hmm. last night in uh, in Vancouver, uh, Eva Goyan, the pianist. Oh, did she do for Push? Or she was in the Push Festival. Oh, she great. did two great performances festival. of uh, of Anne Southam's music. Mm. I was at the Tuesday night performance. It was absolutely sensational. She mm. was such a beautiful. She's she's such a sensitive player. But I was her flute teacher. She doesn't play flute anymore, which I perhaps says something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I knew Eve before I knew Atom. But we grew up together, and we're about the same age, in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And my mother was always saying, "You should work with Adam Agoyan." And uh, Shushon Agoyan would always say, "You should work with Rod Sharman." And eventually, we, we wrote an opera together. Uh, we wrote a couple of pieces where he wrote poetry for me, but I've never scored a film for him. He's faithful okay. to Michael Dana, and Michael Dana does a super job. So uh, the, the collaboration you did with him, was was that elsewhere, Les? Correct. Did you see it? No, but Ooh. I heard about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good title. El I, I'm going to see Elsewhere Less. Correct. Elsewhere Less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Rodney Sharman, our guest, he's an international composer, is a composer who lives here, who has an international rep. We'll come back.